Our next speaker is distinguished Toastmaster Paul Bruniforte. Paul has given many different types of speeches at Toastmasters. Most are motivational, <coughs> inspirational, some are humorous, and occasionally he tells a story. Over the past couple of years, several members of the club have asked him to reprise the story of Rumble in the Jungle. Today, Paul will tell an incredible story that is hard to believe, but 100% true. Paul's presentation is in accordance with the Presentation Mastery Path Level 3, Connecting Through Storytelling. It is beneficial to know that Paul is not a hunter, never hunted, and does not plan to hunt. However, he also does not judge people who enjoy hunting and encourage you to do the same. <laughs> Most people have no idea regarding the many different points of view on the topic. This title, the, the title of the story, Rumble in the Jungle, please welcome Paul Brunaforte. Let's get ready to rumble yeah. in the jungle. Here's the prologue. There's five characters in this story. My father-in-law, Roy Sr., my brother-in-law, his son, Roy Jr., who I refer to as J.R., Roy's wife, Kay, not Debbie's mother, Pado, a African guide, and the beast, the lion. Now, to understand this story, you must understand Roy. Roy was born in 1930, but he should have been born in 1830 because he is a mountain man. I can imagine him on a horse somewhere in the Northwest with a mule behind him packed with furs. That's who Roy really is. And when he was a young man living in Colorado, he was a hunting guide and hunted all over the country and Canada, Alaska. And then he decided to go to Africa. Hmm. Now, when you're a hunter and you're an Af you go to Africa, one of the goals is to get the big five. You want to get elephant, rhino, cape buffalo, leopard, and the king of the jungle, the lion. So Roy got the first four and made a decision to go to Africa and get number five, the big lion. So after three days on the hunt, they finally come across a pride. And there's two male African lions there, one with a black mane and one with a golden mane. The one with the black mane noticed people out there, so he got up and walked away. And the one with the golden mane stood there and looked at them. And Pano, the guide, said, Roy, there's your lion. Roy takes his rifle and he look at he's a really good shot. He shoots, he hits the lion, but it's not a kill shot. Oh. And the lion takes off. So now they have to hunt a wounded male lion. So they're now hunting the male lion. And we have this on film because JR wasn't allowed to carry a rifle, so he took his recorder. Only Pano and Roy were allowed to have a rifle. So now we have on film them walking down with Maasai next to them as they're part of their guides. And they're tracking the lion. Little did they know that while they were hunting the lion, the lion was hunting them. The lion wasn't this way. It had circled around and came out from the rear Roy, J.R., turns and gets him on film, pouncing along. And Pano says to Roy, Roy, take the shot, take the shot. And Roy said he waited later on. He said, I waited until in his sight it was all lion. Roy shoots, hits the lion. The lion still doesn't go down. Pano turns and from the hip, he goes to shoot the lion. And the lion sees Pano. Pano fires, doesn't take the lion down. The lion leaps on Pano. And he's got the guide on the floor. And his claws are clawing at Pano's legs. 
Pano's punching him in the eyes to try to keep the lion from biting him. Roy, at this point, he sees the lion on top of Pano, but he can't shoot the lion because the bullet, which is like this big, will go through the lion and kill Pano. So what he does is he goes around to the side to try to shoot the lion in the head. As he gets down and tries to shoot at this angle, the lion looks at him and leaps on Roy. And the lion is on top of Roy, holding Roy down like this. Roy takes his rifle and jams it into the lion's mouth. The lion crunches down, and we have the sight, and the hole in the sight is this big from the canine. And Roy, after sticking it in his mouth, the lion rips the rifle out and it flings the rifle to the side. Roy knows that at this point, he must feed the lion non-essential parts. So he jams his arm into the lion's mouth and tries to get his other arm. The lion crushes his arm and takes his paw, puts it around Roy's back and holds it and starts dragging Roy off into the jungle. Now, a miracle happened. You ever hear the story about a woman whose baby is stuck in a car? She goes out and lifts the car up somehow, magically. Somehow, Pano, who's laying on the ground bleeding, this, and this is all happening within 90 seconds, there's dust from the line. Somehow, Pano gets his rifle, puts a round in it, turns, and shoots the lion in the neck. And the lion dies on Roy. JR now comes back with his camera, and we have on film the Maasai pulling the lion off, and Roy gets up, and he stumbles over and falls against one of these big termite mounds. And you can hear Pano say, Roy, I'm done for. Roy, I'm done for. The Maasai come in, they grab the guys, they get them into a jeep, and they take them over to a, a makeshift area to try to bandage them up. They weren't able to get a helicopter to come on in and fly them to a hospital in Tanzania. There they are in the hospital. Pano feels terrible that his client gets mauled by a lion. So he says to Roy, Roy, if you ever want to come back, I feel terrible, I will give you a free lion hunt. <laughs> now you would think, who in the world is going to go do that, right? I mean, take the hit. <laughs> Not my father-in-law, like Rocky. He got balls, he went to physical therapy. He come over to my house for dinner, he's got the balls, he's doing the exercise. One year later, he goes back to Africa with the same crew. J.R., K., they go back to Africa. So this time they're meeting Pano out at the site where the hunter were gonna go hunting. So they rented a plane and they rented a pilot. The pilot doesn't know the plane. So J.R. is in the front seat, K and Roy are in the back, and the pilot puts the button to get ready to land. They see Pano out there, they're waving and everything. The, and, the, and the guy's tapping the instruments. Huh. The light for the landing gear doesn't go on. So now he says, I'm not really sure if the landing gear is down. So he says, the pilot says to JR, go in there, there's a thing, wind down the landing gear. So Roy, JR says, Well, which way do I go? He says, I don't know, just turn. So, <laughs> so JR gets in there and he says, Okay, there it is. They land the plane. Do you think the wheels were down or up? They were up. The plane crashes. If you would see the picture of the debris, you think there's no way people escape. They all walked away. Roy gets his lion and has the lion mounted in his house, which was just an incredible thing. Now, a lot of people think it can't be true. Well, here is the story. It was in the Tanzania News, double page of, of the capture. No one ever really gets away 
from a mauling of a lion. But Roy did get away. And all of this is captured in the book that Kay wrote called The Twilight Zone of the Huntress. This story and many more of Roy's exploits are contained in this book. And it's just an incredible experience because years before this happened, we're sitting down to dinner, and I said, Roy, what would be one of your most greatest wishes from hunting? And Roy said, I would love to have a grizzly bear charging me. Oh. And as the grizzly bear comes, I'd like to shoot the grizzly bear <laughs> as he's sleeping, and I would like him to just, his claws come out and just barely rip my shirt. <laughs> My father-in-law aspired to. So what happened? He got that and much more. Mr. Toastmaster. Please take 60 seconds to evaluate Paul's speech. Oh, I forgot to hit record.